Welcome everybody to this advanced movement tutorial for Demon Turf Neo Splash. I uh, just wanted to make a little video to go over some of the more advanced movement techniques that you could do in this game. Uh, if you want to get familiar with the basics, I would highly recommend checking out some Chaos's uh, Any% percent tutorial. It goes over a lot of the basic moves, but since then we have discovered a lot of stuff. Um, I specifically have also discovered some nice quirks and some nice routes um, yeah, that I would like to show to everybody. Um, so to start things off, I have a input display in the bottom left corner. Uh, my keybinds are WASD for moving around. I have spinning or hovering on left click. I have my rollout on right click. So this is different from the default. I like having uh, my spin on the spammable button and I don't know, left click just seemed reasonable to me. And obviously space for jump, as you can see. So, to get things started, I want to mention that you probably shouldn't be using the 2 HP mod, I believe it's called Guardian Angel, uh, as it messes with some of your air charges. And air charges are very important. More specifically, after doing a ground hop, you would not be able to do an aerial uh, glide an aerial glide at all. Uh, and grounded glide hops are used all over the place. Um, and you often just want to have your aerial glide as well. But for some reason, the Guardian Angel mod di disables that. It seems to be a bug. I think they're going to fix it. But for now, I would advise against using it. Uh, let me pull up my little list of all the things that I want to talk about. So, first things first. Um, there's going to be a lot of talk about gliding. Uh, various variations of the glide and when you can glide. And more specifically, glide hop. Uh, also, I'll try to put timestamps in the description below so you can skip the specific parts, but I would also advise to just uh, follow all of this if you're relatively new to the game or you're just curious about um, yeah, about how Beebs' physics really work. So, first things first, when you're on the ground, you can do... I'm gonna call it a glide. It's officially called a dash in the keybinds menu, but I'm gonna call it a glide, as I always have. Uh, and you'll see after... The glide ends. Beeps does a little, little drifty animation. Uh, in this time, you could jump. Uh, this is what I would call a glide hop. Um, but if you sp spam the glide button, uh, generally you will not be able to do that in any reasonable capacity, unless you fulfill one of two criteria. And the first criterion is if your angle changes a lot. Uh, so I'm just going to spam E, and I'm going to change my angle between light uses. If I can <laughs> manage to figure it out with my uh, keyboard inputs. There we go. So you can actually do three glides, and then you stop. That is, a three is the limit. Um, so sometimes I will use this at the start of a level. So I kind of move around quickly, or like I'll do two of them, and then go into a glide hop. Um, like so. And it can be a pretty fast strategy. Now, you don't always have to change your angle. Uh, as it turns out, you can also do your triple glide on the ground if you're not holding any direction. So as you can see, neutral WASD. There you go, triple glide. And you can also hold a direction for one of the glides, but then not for the one before or after. So. Right there, I was holding W for the first one, and then let go. And similarly, you can do a neutral one. And then kind of do another one like that. I, I think the W input might actually have to be pretty late. But, um, yeah, in some levels I'll spawn in. Not this level, but in some level I'll just start off the level like that. So, double ground glide into glide hop. Um... You don't have to do WASD inputs to get the multiple glides with the angle change. You can also use your mouse, but yeah. As long as your movement angle changes enough. If you only do like a slight change, it's still not going to work. So I think it's about like a 45 degree angle that you have to change it by. And then uh, you should be able to do it. So that's like a little optimization. I think I use it at the end of 
the subway dreams where you do your big rollout jump and then you have like a little bit of time left before you reach the painting so i'll just do a quick one of those and that'll usually get me to the end uh so that's number one uh second off as i mentioned before you have a grounded glide hop so when you're gliding on the ground you can jump out of it by just holding the jump button and beeps will jump automatically uh, you can do this off of an edge as well just like that and it's actually a great way to get some distance because you keep a lot of speed through the glide hop so that is that variation uh, but you can also do an aerial glide hop under certain circumstances so if i were to just jump and glide it doesn't matter if i hold the jump button or spam it i will not be able to do it um what we know already or what's already publicly known is that you can also do a rollout bounce into a glide hop now for this you have to time your jump input you cannot hold it as you do on the ground or even off of an edge you have to time it so let's do bounce e jump and again bounce e jump and i say e but it's Glide, of course, whatever your glide input happens to be. And there is a window for this. If you do it too early, it's not gonna work. If you do it too late, it's also not gonna work. The window is like... It's not small, but it's not huge either. I guess it's kind of hard to demonstrate right here. I guess I'll just do it off the edge. So glide and jump. Didn't work that time. So there's like... I don't know, maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.4 seconds to get your jump out. Maybe a bit more, it's hard to gauge. But yeah, after you bounce, you can do your jump input after an aerial glide. That is a useful technique. This one was already known. Um, what's new is that there's actually a lot of circumstances where you can do what I would call the aerial glide hop. Um, one of those is when you just walk off the edge, which this is actually not the best place to show this. Um, so you just walk off, glide, and jump. And because it is kind of like a buffered ground state hop, you even after walking off and you do this glide technically in the air, you still get this glide. Unless you have the Guardian mod, again. Um, so... This can be used in a couple of places to just like walk off the edge, jump. Like if you're trying to cross a big gap, that's not necessarily a different in height. So if you just want to get across quickly without, you know, going super high in the air, it's a very good option. Uh, similarly, you can also hover off of an edge. And then you can also do your aerial glide off. So this is one that I use quite a lot in Crane Tracks, for example. Um, and the nice thing about this, because you start your hover on the ground, you get an aerial hover too. So you kind of get like two hovers for the price of one. It's fantastic for like making very large distance jumps. So I can do another hover, and I can do another glide. It's kind of broken. Um, but in a good way, I would say. Uh, you do have to be careful with this one, because if you start your hover while in the air, even if just very slightly, like if you start your hover now, I'm not gonna have my hover. Okay, that was still a bit too soon. I guess there's like a tiny buffer, but you do have to be very careful. If I start my hover here, now it's not gonna work for sure. I'm gonna left mouse button, but it's not doing anything. That's something to be aware of. Let me see. Uh, another thing that you can do to get your aerial glide hop is to be launched into the air by a tornado. Now, mind you, you have to have a grounded state when you're being tossed up by the tornado. So if I walk into it like that, it works. But, let's get another one. If I jump into it, and I bounce off of it without hitting the ground first. I don't get my 
up because I jumped as I went into the air. So I basically used up my air charge, as it were. Uh, now this is also freaking fantastic for, you know, making very big jumps because you can be launched up by this, do this. And this is all basically from the ground. So that's pretty impressive height. Um, especially for not having access to any walls. Walk into it, glide, jump, and then what, do whatever else you have to do. I believe that about covers the basics here. And there is one thing... I guess there's a few more things <laughs> related to the glide up. Um, specifically, there are certain actions or certain triggers that also give you a glide hop refresh. Uh, one of them is the boost ring. So I'm gonna jump into this. So again, I shouldn't have a glide hop, like an aerial glide hop. But after hitting the boost ring, oop, get it back. And again, oop. And this also works on the rings that boost you forward in, I believe it's Subway Dreams Remix. Uh, so this is actually like a very nice way to also get a lot of distance and height. So that is the main thing I wanted to show in this area. Um, next up. You can also do a rollout bomb and keep your aerial glide hop state. Again, important that you don't jump bonk into it, because then it doesn't work. You have to be grounded, or in a grounded state, and then you can do it. So, I guess I haven't tested this, but this should work. Bonk, and jump. So it does. So, knowing when you are able to do your aerial glide hop is, like, pretty, pretty big. Um... I actually came up with this strategy to just bonk into this and then aerial glide hop and then yeah you can make it to there and then theoretically from there you can move onward. Now another funny thing, since starting a rollout with the little hop keeps your grounded state as it, as it were. Uh, it's not a full grounded state but like a buffered grounded state, I don't know how to refer to it exactly. Uh, you can also use it to bounce onto obstacles. So this is where my pool party strategy comes in. So we start at the level and I would jump onto here. Now from here it's pretty tricky to land on the bouncy part of the umbrella, but it is possible. Um, however, there is an easier way to do it, which is to walk off first and then hold towards the umbrella and do your rollout. Now, it's still a bit tricky, I would say. Um, but yeah, then you can get onto it, and I have not used my jump to get on here. So now, I still have my buffered round states. Which means I can make very big jumps. So, my pool party strategy would be to dribble onto here, and then try to roll out, bounce onto that without jumping. Bonk. Glide. Glide hop. And then do my normal jumps, and I still get my normal glide to make it up here, where you would also land if you did the whole thing where you climb up there and do the roll out jump. Um, but yeah, this strategy actually saves, I think, upwards of 3 seconds. Something along those lines. And uh, yeah, from here you just proceed as normal. But yeah, that's how I've been able to get a 21 in this level, which is, you know, pretty pretty wild. Um, but yeah, you do have to be careful that you don't bounce against the side, which in a way, like, it works because you do keep your grounded state, but you don't get, like, the, the height you need to really progress. Um, so yeah, that's, like, the main thing I wanted to show off here. Um, more glide hop stuff later, but first we're going to take a small detour to Rickety Race. This has been my other more significant discovery. 
Now, first we have to climb up to the top and not fall down, preferably. So I'm trying to do all of this tutorial in one go, but yeah, bear with me for a moment. Just a moment. <laughs> Alright, so now that we're up here, what are we doing here? Well, the main thing is, as you might know, you cannot enter rollout in a 2D section. I mean, it's not a full 2D section because you have like some amount of room to move backwards or forwards, but basically a 2D section. Rollout does not work. If you start a rollout outside of it and you roll into it, it gets cancelled automatically. Still holding right mouse button here. So, what I found is that that is pretty abusable. So, I'm gonna do a walk off the edge, no jump. I'm gonna do a glide hop, and I'm gonna make my way over to the walls over there. So, no jump yet, so we can glide hop. Now, I'm gonna roll out... I can roll out here because I'm not in 2D. But as soon as I go into like the 2D trigger and you'll see the platform start to appear. The game is like, oh yeah, you're not supposed to be in rollout, let's take you out of it. Which in this case I'm abusing to get a wall jump. And, or at least a wall cling. Um, and wall clings are important. So if I do a wall jump, I don't get a glide hop. That's a thing. If you wall jump, that is a type of jump, so you don't get your uh, aerial glide hop. However, and I'm going to show this off a bit more later in crane tracks. Well, first off, it's possible to land here, and then you get your grounded state, and then you can also do this. But it's actually enough to just walk thing, let go of the wall without jumping. And I did something wrong there. <laughs> Uh, but it is possible, I promise, to be cling onto a wall and have that refresh your light hop. So, wall cling, okay, that's the landing again. But have your rollout automatically be cancelled and then you get your rollout hop or glide hop. One more time. So, just like that. Now, what you can do with this is kind of just traverse this entire 2D area without being in 2D. Um, it's not ridiculously much faster than taking it normally, but I do believe it saves a few seconds. So we're just gonna shortly cling onto the wall, do some glide hops to traverse forward. And now I'm gonna go towards this pole here. Do a walk thing to refresh my buffered ground state, and that'll let me do another glide hop, which lets me get all the way to the end. And that's basically the strategy that I used in my PB. Um, it's a bit tricky. It's not much faster, but I would say it's really fun. <laughs> the fact that we can just basically skip a 2D section is kind of incredible to me. So... That's rickety race. Um, now I want to go into some more wall climbing mechanics. So to get things started, we'll first have to make our way over to the large wall. Actually, while we're here, um, Mary Mitch recently found a new route in this level, which is fantastic. Um, it's already faster normally, but with this knowledge of aerial glide hops, it actually becomes very, very powerful. So we're just gonna glide off. As normal, I'm gonna do one bonk. One more bonk, cling onto wall. Hover out of the wall cling, don't jump. And then you can make your way over here with minimal bonks. Um, and now that you're here, you can Hover off of the edge, you know, the huge. 
So that saves a little bit of time over the previous strats. A few seconds, so shoutouts to Mitch. Uh, I was actually going to make my way over to that big wall there. Um, let me just restart from my checkpoints. Actually, another thing while we're here. You see those tall buildings? Um, you can get a rollout bounce off of these corners. It's tricky. Sometimes it just doesn't seem to want to work. And you want to have like a good angle to wall. Um, but yeah, this way you can also force yourself to exit rollout and uh, climb, the, climb a building that way. So that's the strategy I would have used until Mitch's new strategy. Um, you have to be like a certain distance away from the corner for it to really work properly and your angling just needs to be on point. It's a bit tricky sometimes, I would say. Um, there is another way to climb up this. In this particular case, it's not going to be faster, but just as a demonstration. I can... Let me see. Um, I'm doing this wrong now. Okay. Just refreshing my memory. Because you really have to be juggling your... A buffered ground state so you can aerial glide hop. Um, so I'm gonna get to started by just getting a walk thing first and then we're gonna start climbing straight up. So walk thing, bonk, aerial glide hop, walk thing, bonk, and so on. Now you want to be maximizing your height as much as possible so I kind of pull back as I glide towards the building. Um, you can watch my input display for, like, the timing. And yeah, this is just a way to infinitely climb up a theoretically very thin wall. Pretty good. Not currently useful anywhere, but I could totally see this being a thing in, um, in custom levels, for example. Or, you know, if you just want to show off, that's also a possibility. Now I'm gonna make my way over to this long wall here. Based on another checkpoint. Um, this, I guess, is not as related. Uh, I guess it's still related to like infinite wall climbing and like bunking. Let me just quickly refresh my memory because, again, you really have to juggle. Can you hover? Can you bunk? Can you get yourself out of a state, out of your monster state, so you can be human to wall jump again. It's all a bit much to juggle at times. Um, especially when you're just trying to rapid fire all the strats. Um, I mean, I guess there's multiple ways to do this. One is to just try to get a bonk at like a diagonal. And then you can... So this is like... Nah, this is slightly different from what I meant, but I mean, I guess it still works. So just make sure you get like... Nice angled bonks and you can traverse a long horizontal wall without ever really needing ground. Uh, of course you can also do this with... Light hops. Which I would argue is a lot easier, actually, in hindsight. Um, you just want to be sure you don't like do your double jump or any other kind of form. So you can just continually wall jump along this long wall. Let me see, what else do we have? I think I've covered almost everything. I I've written so many words in this document as like notes for what to discuss. Infinite cling hover glide hop wall climb vertical. <laughs> Which I think is the thing that I showed on that building there. Either that or I'm just confusing myself. Um, oh yeah, one last thing. Um, an expired glide has some funny properties. So it can't directly scale this, but if this crane is moving towards Beebs as she is hovering, 
even if the hover is uh, expired. You can kind of glide along it because the wall is moving into her, which I guess is creating a sufficient angle to uh, let her move upward. Not currently used in any of my runs, but it's a fun little trick. Not easy to get enough height to actually get on top of there, but yeah, any level that has like a slope like that that moves. Yeah, this is potentially something to remember. Alright, I think the final thing that I want to show is on Subway Dreams. And that is how to consistently get the good bonk on the tower climb. So let me just make my way over there. I also, in the process of sciencing Beeb's movements, um, found some glitches. But I think this video has gone on long enough, and I have shown all the useful stuff so far. Oh yeah, actually, uh, another fun thing. I have my buffered ground state, so I can do an aerial glide hop. So, in theory, you can just kind of, you know, kind of just go. Um, let me actually show what my normal strat is. And that would have to be a bonk. So, the thing I wanted to show here was how to pretty reliably be able to get that bonk, but now I'm actually missing it all up. But yeah, I, I would aim for the good bonk there. Anyway. That's what I would do. Just roll out onto the trampoline. Uh, light hop to get some height. Wall jump, double jump, and yeah, just get up here. Now, you'll see that this tower is not perfectly round. There are these flat parts, which I would call segments. You know, it's not a perfect circle because you can't really do that in polygons. Um, so the secret to getting the good bonk is to first off be aiming straight towards the tower as you're going in for the rollout bonk. And second thing is that you want to be on the right half of one of these segments. If you're on the left half, it's gonna bonk you backwards. If you are on the right half, it's pretty consistently gonna give you the good bonk. I say pretty, but like, I've only ever messed it up by me messing it up. Whenever I've, you know, reliably hit the right half, it's always given me the good bonk. Now, it can be kind of hard to tell where a segment starts and ends, especially when you're looking at it like this. Um, so that's why, once you have some height, um, do your wall jump. I actually look up and try to approach the wall at such a time that my bonk would make me hit as the right side passes by. Um, it's still not easy. I would say it's pretty easy to mess up. Sometimes you just don't get the bonk at all, or you misestimate how long it takes for Beeps to hit the wall in the rollout form, but that is the trick to it. The right half of a segment. Really be on the lookout for like changing shadows and like these slight corners here. And um, yeah, that should get you the strategy pretty reliably. It's still difficult but yeah it's mostly in your hands it's not just pure rng uh i believe that's everything i wanted to show today related to advanced movement techniques um yeah when you put this all together you can really schmoove you can really make very large distance gaps uh, especially with you know hover stalling and then we can do another one of these like that's kind of a ridiculous amount of distance right from basically one jump. And especially when you work this one into, yeah, it's a good height as well. So, yeah, I hope you all learned something today. Um, I will at some point make some videos about like various uh, glitches that I've been finding as well. 
but if I do that all in this video, it's gonna be a bit much. But you can do some crazy stuff like this. And be punked away by a flag and everything. It's super jank. <laughs> um, wouldn't recommend going for that in an any percent run. But yeah, you can get punked and you can even get literally punked to the end here. Uh, fun stuff. But yeah, all that is for another video. So thanks for watching. Hope this has been helpful. And uh, let's go get that sub 8 together. <laughs> Alright, thanks for watching. Peace out.